Ashley Nerona with Voice of the Vatican for Shalom World TV. And I am so honored to be here today with His Eminence, Francis Cardinal Arinze. Welcome to Voice of the Vatican. Your Thank Eminence. you. Thank you. Well, on behalf of all of our viewers, we want to thank you for your service to the church, to the truth, for your, your tireless, dedicated, steadfast service. So thank you for that, Your Eminence. I thank you. Your Eminence, your Episcopal motto is Regnum Christi Floreat, may the kingdom of Christ flourish. How has that kingdom flourished in your own life? How have you seen this Holy Spirit working in your life from your priesthood until today? Well, nobody can be a judge in his own case. So it's only other people who will be judges. Uh, I can only stammer, and, uh, uh, but uh, I do not pretend to be able to articulate how the Holy Spirit has worked in my life or through my life or how God has used me. But all the same, I can say that looking back these 50 years, 51 years, I have many reasons <laughs> to thank God because God enabled me to take part in the Second Vatican Council, the last session in 1965, because I was made bishop just two weeks before that last session in 1965. So I got in. Not that I did wonderful things there, but I admired what was happening. And I could say I'm a council father, even though I was the last. Then, you know, watch the church. The church is alive. The church does not live in the Vatican Museum. There are uh, statues there, and there are That's books, right. and there are artifacts, but the church is actually alive, not just in St. Peter's Basilica and in Via Conciliazione, but also in New York, and in Calcutta, and also in Dubai, and also in Lagos, and uh, in uh, Kenya, in Nairobi, that church is in Caracas, that church is in Buenos Aires, it is in Tokyo. It is the biggest religious family in the world. So, you see, it, it is wonderful how the same faith, the same sacraments, nevertheless, are lived according to various situations, languages, cultures, peoples, places. But that church goes down well. It isn't a national affair because it isn't something invented on earth. Right. It is from heaven. The Son of God came down for love of us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. If the church were not instituted by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, it would have ended up in the Vatican Museum long ago. Yes. <laughs> but the church was instituted by Christ. So it's going to stand until the end of time because it has divine guarantee. Individuals can blunder from the days of Judas Iscariot, but the church will remain. Yes, and that is why we're here, Your Eminence, to praise the Lord for that. Your Eminence, when you were elected bishop in 1965, over 50 years ago, not only were you the youngest Roman Catholic bishop at the time, but it also allowed you the opportunity to participate as a father of the Second Vatican Council. Would you tell us about what it was like to be a young bishop and father of Vatican II? Well, maybe there was one bishop, or there were two, in the areas dominated by communism in those years, mm -hmm. who were a little younger, but unknown to the public. But those who were actually in St. Peter's Basilica uh -huh. for Vatican II, I was the last wow. and the youngest. One bishop asked me, are you a seminarian? <laughs> I said, I was, but not now. <laughs> the church took a risk and make a, made a priest who is 32 years old, a bishop. It was a wonderful experience for me to admire those great figures in the history of the church. In those days, Cardinal Duffner, Cardinal Frings from Germany, Cardinal Koenig from Vienna. Oh, then, you know, there were Cardinal Wojtyła. He was not yet a cardinal. I did not know him then, okay. but he was there, very much there. And it was Cardinal Sunans from Belgium. It was wonderful to see m more than 2,000 bishops wow. from all around the world occupied on how to present the church to the world of today. Yes. I did not contribute a whole lot, but 
I could still say I am a council father That's because right. I signed the documents and the majority of the 16 documents were finalized in the last session wow. in 1965. Okay. Although the bishops worked on them and the commissions and the theology for the past four years, but most of them were finalized at the last session in 1965. And whoever, whichever bishop was present signed. So I can say I signed Indeed. on what others had worked, but it is just God's work. God uses all of us as instruments. It was a wonderful experience. And for a young bishop to watch the church in my country, in Rome, and around the world these 50 years has been a real um, help to faith to faith to grow and to rejoice that the church is actually good news. It isn't bad news. It is good news. Yes. Although from time to time, you get somebody throwing sand into the works, but the church will continue. Yes, it will indeed. Would you tell us a little bit, Your Eminence, about how you first felt the call of the Lord in your life toward the priesthood? Only God can finally analyze how an individual answers his call. We can only, in our weak human language, articulate a little. There was a priest that I knew, the first priest I ever knew. He was Father, Cipre, Father Michael Tansy. He began our parish, Dunukovia, in Oni Church Diocese in Nigeria in 1940. He was the first priest I ever knew. He baptized me when I was nine years old. And I, my first confession at his hands, and my first communion at his hands, and the, I was in a school run by him, Catholic school, for six years, and I was his mass server in 1945. I was contaminated by contact with this priest because he was like fire. Wow. You cannot be near fire and remain cold. Yes. You, you're going to be con, uh, if, uh, uh, you know, influenced by the fire he inspired. So indeed, can you believe that after 13 years, he worked as a priest in Nigeria, he went to England and became a Cistercian, a Trappist monk in Mount St. Bernard in the diocese of, um, oh, what's the diocese? The town is Colville, Nottingham, Nottingham Diocese in England. And he died there in 1964. And he has been beatified by St. John Paul II in 1998. After that, I felt my master is in the headquarters. Yes. So he inspired me, but only in ways God knows best. Mm -hmm. But in those areas where he worked, there followed many seminarians, many young people became priests, many girls became sisters, and some men became brothers. It shows what a person who is on fire yes. with the message of Christ can do. How holiness inspires holiness, and we all have a responsibility to continually strive for it, don't we? It does. Yes. If you have good news, you should not keep it to yourself alone. You should share it. That's right. Well, that's... If you don't share it, we suspect you that perhaps you don't believe in it mm. entirely. That's what we hope to do here at Shalom World TV, Your Eminence. And Your Eminence, would you share with our Voice of the Vatican viewers about what the state of vocations is like in your home country of Nigeria? Encouraging. Yes, Many young people answer God's call. Of course, we can speak of marriage life as also a vocation, mm -hmm. but often when we say vocations in the church, we mean what are called technically ecclesiastical mm -hmm. level vocation. Mm -hmm. That means priests, religious brothers, sisters, monks, nuns, many young people offer themselves. We have about 55 dioceses in Nigeria. Okay. Not all of them, obviously, are as heavily populated with Catholics as some others. There are some that have three quarters of the population Catholic, but all of them notice a rise in the number of young people who respond to God's call. In the midst of suffering, it is that area where there was a civil war, Nigeria, Biafra, and in that area where people suffered much, we have many more young people responding. Wow. So much so that the problem for the bishops and the religious superiors is housing 
and formation. Wow. When you have many candidates to provide for them, to look after them, and to be sure of the quality of formation they get becomes a major preoccupation. Like a big family, if you have seven children in the family, you have to make sure they eat well and vest well and have good schooling. Yes. So a big family is also a bundle of responsibilities. True. But we do have it. It is a happy responsibility. Exactly. A lot of joy comes with that bundle of responsibility, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, it's true. Your Eminence, we so thank you for your time and for being with us here today. And would you kindly impart your blessing upon the viewers of Shalom World TV and Voice of the Vatican? May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend on you, the producers, promoters of Shalom World TV, and also your supporters and your friends and your listeners. And may this blessing remain with you always.